Hello everyone. So I left the simulator running for several more hours to see where the creatures would end up, and it turns out that they managed to hack the physics engine. You may have noticed in the previous video that the mushrooms were clustering under trees, since the creatures were unable to get to them there. Each tile also has a maximum mushroom count, so I thought that once that many mushrooms had spawned, the forest would effectively become barren, and we might begin to see the creatures evolve some more to favour the meadows, perhaps becoming big and slow. So here's some screenshots I took at regular intervals. The creatures originally got smaller, but have started getting bigger again. We can see that basically they're all darting around as fast as they can manage, so I guess being big doesn't hurt them anymore, now they've learnt how to be super fast. This is how they've broken the collision detection to allow them to sneak inside trees. The game engine checks where they will end up after each tick, and if that would be inside a tree, it stops them and kills their speed. We could see in the first video that a bunch of creatures would often get spawned inside trees, and then they were stuck. That barely ever happens anymore though, I think that's because the creatures are able to accelerate out of the tree and gain enough distance in between ticks. They've basically evolved teleportation. So clearly I need to fix that. This video also shows how bad the frame rate of the simulation gets, so after this recording I did some work to improve that. Using Scython, which compiles Python code to C code, and is awesome helps a lot, but there are some other optimizations to be done too. You can check out everything that's changed in the git history, link in the description. I'm now just about able to get 60 frames per second. I also wanted to show you the genome and neural network in more detail, since I skimmed over it a little in the previous video. The genome stored as an object containing the genes that dictate various attributes of the creature. I dumped the current physical state of a creature from the previous video into JSON format, which is what we're looking at now. This part of the dump shows a genome, which has a radius gene, a gene stating the number of hidden neurons, and then two more genes containing the input and output weights of the hidden layer. These are stored in a flat array, so the first three values are the input weights of the first hidden neuron, the second three values are the inputs of the second hidden neuron, and so on. This format means if the number of hidden neurons gene is changed, we can easily crop or grow the array. If it grows, we generate random values for the new neuron. I guess this is like the gene grabbing whatever proteins are lying around at the time. I've also created a neural network inspector, which we can load this creature into. Here we can manually change the input neuron's values to see how the output changes. This is the creature which changed angle when it was touching something. It also looks like it now won't spawn if it's touching anything, which is what has avoided creatures being born inside trees. So what's going on inside each neuron? If we look at this hidden layer neuron, we can see that its three inputs have a weight of 1.6, minus 0.7, and 1.5 respectively. We calculate the value of this neuron by multiplying the value of each input by the weight of each input. So in this case we multiply them all by 1 and sum those values. 1.6 minus 0.7 plus 1.5 gives us about 2.4. Now with heavy weights or lots of input neurons, this value could get arbitrarily high. So we also put it through what's called an activation function. In this case, it's a sigmoid function, which converts it into a value between 0 and 1. So if we change the haptic input to 0, we now remove the influence that that neuron has. The same thing happens to the output neurons using values and weights from the hidden neurons. The only difference here is that we don't use the sigmoid function because we want the outputs to be unbounded. So I hope this video was informative and interesting to you. Uh, I promise I'm going to be uh, implementing that vision soon, so check out the next video when it arrives. Thanks for watching!